Well, it is a beautiful, mild May 2021 day in southern Texas. So what is the nerd doing? Well, no, he's not outside enjoying the weather. He thought he'd put a video together comparing an old school BIOS to a new school BIOS. So let's take a look. So what am I looking for in a BIOS? I want to be able to easily see my CPU temperature so I can see that when I built the system, I have my heat sink on correctly and that it is cooling properly. I want to be able to see my fan speeds for not only my CPU fan, but also my case fans and see that I've got them plugged into the right fan headers. I want to see that all my RAM memory is showing up and what memory slots I have them plugged into so I can make sure I've got dual channel or quad channel or whatever. I want to be able to see my storage devices. I want to see that they're present and that the motherboard is detecting them so I know I have them installed properly. It's also very nice to be able to see the voltages coming out of the power supply so I can see everything is healthy with that. And then every BIOS of any recent history has some sort of one-time boot menu. So as you watch me go through these two BIOSes, you can see if these features are present and how you get to them. Let's take a look. Here is the ASUS UEFI BIOS Utility, and it's showing me everything I want to know in a nutshell. First thing it's showing me is my CPU temperature with a nice little graph. I can see I have an i9-9820X CPU with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And I can see exactly which memory slots I have the RAM in, slots A1, and I have the second memory stick in C1. Next, moving down, I can see I've got my fans plugged into the proper headers on the motherboard, and they're running properly. And my SATA information, it shows me that I have a ASUS uh, DVD drive and a crucial 240 gigabyte SSD. All right there in a nutshell. Exactly what I want to see so I can verify I put the computer together properly. Now with ASUS you get all the advanced BIOS options you would expect but you have to switch to advanced mode by pressing F7 or clicking down here. Alright, now that we're into the advanced mode, I'm going to pause the video and freeze this frame. The first thing you can see is over on the right hand side, we have the hardware monitor that shows me my CPU speed and temperature and core voltage. I can see my memory speed, voltage, and amount. And then finally, I can see the main three voltages coming out of the power supply, 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts. I'm not going to be exhaustive here, but on the main option, you can see that we have the BIOS version information. So you can see if there's a more up-to-date BIOS you need to get. And once again, we have CPU model and speed and memory amount. So what I'm going to do now is move on to a screen of the advanced menu. So the advanced menu, I'll just mention a few things, such as CPU configuration. This is where you would go to enable virtualization, which is usually turned off by default on a brand new motherboard. You can also see PCH storage configuration to adjust your hard drive settings. And similarly for USB and Thunderbolt, you could go down to these settings to adjust those settings as well. The boot screen has all the typical things you would expect. The only thing I'll point out here is this is where you'd go to enable non-secure boot if you had a good reason to do it. If you don't have a good reason to do it, leave it alone. The monitor screen will show me, once again, my various temperatures, gives me a little bit more detail, CPU temperature plus motherboard and voltage regulators. Fan speeds again, and if I scroll down, I can see my voltages, including the voltage my CPU is using, plus the voltages coming out of my power supply. To exit advanced mode, just press your F7 and you're back in the easy mode main screen. While we're here, the last thing I want to point out is the one-time boot menu, which is very nice, and this will list all your possible boot devices. If you have a USB plugged into the drive at the point you enter the BIOS, it will be listed in this boot menu as well. 
So there you have it, a quick tour of the ASUS BIOS screens. The AS ROG BIOS is probably the most primitive I'm going to look at. On the main screen, you can see we have the BIOS version, followed by the processor model, along with its speed, and then I can see my total memory and which memory slots the memory sticks are in. So that's good. That gives me some basic information. What's missing from the main screen is my hardware monitor. Now for my hardware monitor on this screen, I have CPU temperature and motherboard temperature. I can also see my CPU fan speed and my chassis fan speed. And then finally, I can see the various voltages. I can see my CPU voltage and the voltages coming out of my power supply. I need to see if my disk drives are connected. To do that, I have to go to advanced storage configuration. And then, yes, I can see that my SSD is connected and my DVD drive is connected. But you have to know to go to advanced storage configuration to see those settings. I do not like that about this BIOS. The most significant thing on the tools menu is the instant flash utility. You have to download the BIOS from the internet, put it on a fat 32 memory stick to be able to install it. It's kind of behind the times. If we go over and look on the boot menu, we can set our boot sequence, but I prefer to hit F11 for a one-time boot menu. The only other thing I usually change is to turn on the boot beep, which means power on self-test successful with a single beep. Overall, if you look at the AS Rock BIOS, it is bare bones, it's very basic, it's functional if you know where to look. The AS Rock One Time Boot menu is activated by pressing F11, and when it comes up, you'll get a list of all bootable devices. If you have a USB memory stick in the computer, that will be included in the choices. Well, that's going to do it, and I think now the call of the wonderful weather is overcoming my desire to be a nerd. So you all take care. Have a great weekend. Thanks a lot.